Hello, my name is Mason Absher. I'm the Theater Connections Manager here at Minatrista, and I'm here to give you a little bit of perspective on a project that we've been working on, as well as a little bit of information about the theater program at Minatrista itself. Minatrista's theater program was started in 2008, so we're about 12 years old. As a theater program at a museum, we use um, theater, theatrical technique to bring stories from our collection to life. Sometimes this may manifest itself as a fully produced show. Sometimes this may be a character that we play for a field trip. Sometimes this may just be the way that we approach planning an event or an exhibit. So I came on board in May of 2017, almost three years ago. Now, the first two and a half months of me being at Minatrista, I had to plan the largest event that our theater program oversees, and that's Fairy Sprites and Lights. And some of you are probably familiar with that. So that was a short turnaround time to work on an event that sees thousands of people. So that pretty much consumed the first eight weeks, eight, eight ten weeks of uh, my time here at Minatrista. Then after a little bit of time off and kind of shaking the dust off, it was a good summer, um, we sat around uh, and asked ourselves, what can theater be doing? What's next for us? and went back and forth with a couple of different ideas, some things that even uh, we ended up doing later. And then the Charlottesville riots happened. And we asked ourselves, can theater get involved? Could we use theater to help facilitate a conversation before a, a violent outbreak happens? Could we use theater to give people some perspective. Now, nearly 10 years prior to the Charlottesville riots, there had been a theatrical piece developed about a fictional worker at the Ball Jar Factory in the 1920s who discovers a, um, an unlicensed ball jar with KKK imagery in the bottom. Now, where jars like this would have come from is uh, if there was leftover glass, workers were allowed to make their own projects. So we have other examples in our collection. We have a glass top hat, cane, some of these things we even mentioned in the show. Um, so a worker in the 1920s, he finds this jar and he says, what, what do I do with it? It has KKK imagery in the bottom of it. Should I tell my supervisor? Should I hide it? Should I smash it? I've got an uncle who's in the clan. I've got an uncle who's opposed to the clan. What do I do? We thought, here's somebody who's stuck in the middle. He's not sure what to do. This, this will be great. We can use this to facilitate some incredible conversation. Well, we sent it out to some colleagues and they said, this isn't quite right. You want to get more voices involved. You want people to understand what it's like to be someone else, but you only have one voice. You have one, one white worker. And some research had come to light and we had learned that there were workers of color. There were African-American workers in the jar factory around this time. So we asked ourselves, what would it look like if a African-American worker were to find that same jar? What would his story be like? We realized to tell this story, it couldn't be just me. We needed to get that outside perspective, not just in the world of the play, but in our world of development as well. So I reached out to a colleague at another museum, Aaron Bonds, tremendous playwright, and he created a second piece for us. We went back and forth. I talked about some of what I wanted to do. And so he, he got a draft going. And then after the draft of that first piece, we real, or the first uh, draft rather of the second piece, we realized we needed to get this in front of some people before we just run into an audience. So we pulled people in uh, who were experts in diversity and inclusion, um, community advocates, historians, museum professionals, theater professionals, because we, we wanted to get people to weigh in to say, are we approaching this in a way that gets people uh, putting themselves in someone else's shoes? And it took some rewrites, it took some workshopping, and we were able to do it. Um, another person who really helped with this project, who came along at the right time, uh, was actor Khalid Overall. He 
helped bring this character to life in a way that um, I, I could never have expected. It just, he, he, he became this character. He took such an ownership of it and really was passionate about having these conversations. And we got this in front of uh, all sorts of different types of people, retirement communities, historical societies, rural schools, urban schools. Um, we did a couple of colleges too. And every, every audience, people were walking away, putting themselves in someone else's shoes and also sharing their own experiences. Now, I'm not so naive as to think that one theater piece is going to stop all the disagreements, all the violence and hatred in the world. But what I do hope, what I do hope is pieces like this and being able to facilitate conversation, bring us closer together and make, a, make us a more empathetic and compassionate society. I hope we walk away from these things with perspective. Now, uh, In My Hands and My Heart, which is the piece that we ended up creating, is uh, on an indefinite hiatus right now because of COVID-19. However, it is something that we do hope to bring back at some point in the future, potentially. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for joining me at my little talk today. And um, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to myself or um, you can uh, email our, our info at minatrista.net. And uh, if you have any questions, they'll send them along to me. Thank you.